guys, welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, we're going to do block number three of our Imagine Quilt. We're gonna talk about doing square triangle in a square and half square triangles. So let's get started. Yay! All right, welcome back. We are on month three of the Imagine Quilt. And we are going to get started. This month's pattern we have, I'm gonna show you here. We have the block, which is actually gonna go in the quilt. And then for the bonus project, we're doing a runner. We just changed our layout. And I also went ahead, if you didn't want to do these diamonds on the block, you could interchange them with half square triangles. So I wanted to give you two options for borders for your quilt. Um, and so what I did is the diamonds are two and a half inch square and the half square triangles are two and a half inch square. The count works the same. So instead of having diamonds around, you could have flying geese. Um, we'll get into that some more when we get the borders going, but let's get started. So for this month's block, we will be doing fusible applique. We will be doing a triangle in a square block. We'll be refreshing over half square triangles. Um, and we'll refresh doing fusible applique. I do recommend checking out the first video in this series for the Imagine block, because I go in depth about just basics on cutting and basics on fusible applique all the way through to stitching. Um, we're not gonna put that in this video, it'll just get way too long. Um, so let's get going on our laugh block and runner. All right, so here is the block already appliqued, and I'm gonna hold this up here close so you can see. Uh, the threads for this month were these three yummy, yummy oranges. And um, so what we did is I used this orange on the edge for the centers. I used this reddish orange for the lettering. And then I used this really pale peach to do the daisies. I'm also gonna use this for the quilting on when we do the quilt and quilting on the runner. Um, but it's just such a yummy, pretty color. And this is, let's see, I'm holding it upside down for you guys. Two zero, or two four two zero. So if you're new to this and don't know what I am talking about, let's go over the Imagine Quilt Block and Orifil Thread Collector Club. This is a club being put on by Mole Queen Sewing Center here in Phoenix. Even if you don't live here in Phoenix, they will ship it to you. Each month you get a box of three 50 weight threads that are the large spools from Orifil that I've curated to go with the entire project. I'll put the project here so you can see what the whole thing will look like when it's finished. And then each month with your box, you will get my two-in-one pattern. Oops fingers today. You get a two-in-one pattern. Um, the block of the block of the month quilt is in the pattern, but each month we're also doing a small project with the same fabric colors. Um, in a lot of cases, it's the same uh, pieces. Some cases it's not, um, but I'm giving you a smaller project. So if you don't want to make the big, huge Imagine quilt, you could follow along each month, get your threads, and I give you a bonus project for the month. So far, we've done a bench pillow for month one. We did a vinyl zipper project bag for month two. Month three here is a runner. We have a tote bag coming up. We have a journal cover coming up. Um, I'm trying to think what else. We have a you know, a series of sewing notions that we'll be making. So each month is something different uh, for the secondary bonus project. So if you want to join, again, go to mullqueensewing.com. I will put the link on the screen and I will put the link below. They are continuing to sign up. It is not too late to get all the first three months if you want to go backwards um, or if you just wanna jump in now. With all that being said, I still hope you stick around for the videos if you're not doing the block of the month because it is still giving you techniques and tutorials on different elements of quilting and sewing that can be applied to any project. Whew, that was a lot. Okay, so with all that said, let's get into the block. Um, again, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to do applique. Now, if you happen to have a Cricut, a Silhouette, a Brother Scanning Cut, you also can go, once you buy into the club, there is a page where you'll be able to get the SVG files for that month. 
as well as machine embroidery files if that's what you or machine applique files i think they are called i'm not 100 percent sure um, but it is where you have applique and it machines and borders with your specialty machines uh, that is not something i do but mall queen is uh, giving us those files as well and all of that is available once you sign up for the program so now i've got my fusible web to do my letters now i've already like i said i've already shown you i've done the block center so that we will work on the borders in a minute now we need to do the runner the runner is cut a different size and i've already done the half square triangles but we're going to walk through how to do those as well and I've already prepped my daisies for this guy, but I do need to do the word laugh. So I am gonna go ahead and I am going to move all this stuff out of the way. Now I like to use TransWeb, I like to use Heat and Bond Light. Those are the two fusible products I like to use. Um, whatever product you use, make sure you read the manufacturer's instructions on how to use them, how hot you have your iron set, um, and how long to keep the iron on. Everyone has a different uh, burn point, so you don't want to overheat it because then it won't stick when you need it to. So I've got that. I've also got my Sharpie Ultra Fine Point Markers. These are my favorite markers to do fusible applique with because the tip of the pen is the width of your scissor blade, so you don't have to guess which side of the line to cut on. We can just go ahead and cut on the line with our scissors and it just goes away. So in your pattern, you will find all of your templates and they are already reversed for fusible applique. So that means all your letters should be backwards. These are the templates for the square and a square. Those are instructions. So we're gonna trace our letters and it looks like one of each. Laugh has one. There are no repeat letters in Laugh. So we're gonna go ahead and just start tracing them onto the smooth side of your fusible web. And you remember this is just a guide, so if you're a little off, it's okay. This is a wonky font that I created for the quilt, um, and so it is pretty forgiving. So, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw this line through the L because I am then going to cut it. And you will see you can just trace this through. Here's a little tip. If you need to draw a straight line, don't look at where your pen tip is. Look at where you're going and you will draw a much straighter line. And if you don't believe me, pause the video, grab a pen and paper and try it and you'll be shocked. Um, that was a thing I learned in one of my drafting classes in high school and it was super handy whenever you're drawing a line and we're just going to trace all the letters. So once I get all the letters traced, then we're gonna roughly cut them out as one big ganged piece, and we're going to press it on the wrong side of the fabric for the letters, and we're going to cut them out. So let me get these traced and cut and pressed onto the fabric, then I'll come back and show you the, the cut and how I'm gonna cut the letters. All right, so I have gone ahead, I have traced all the letters, and you'll see I just cut it as one big piece of fusible, and I ironed it onto the wrong side of your fabric. In this case, it's a solid orange, so it doesn't matter, um, but if you are using a print, make sure that the letters are going on the back side of your fabric, because we did it in a mirror image, so then when we cut these out, the letter, the fabric is the right way, and there's glue on the back, so... Now that we've got this done, it's time to cut all our letters apart. Make sure you're using nice sharp scissors to do this. Make sure that you've right used the appropriate size scissors. Like if you use a nine inch blade to cut these letters, you're dealing with a lot of weight of the scissor that you don't necessarily need to deal with. Besides, it gives you an excuse to buy more than one size of scissor. <laughs> I have them in all different sizes and weights. Um, and I use super tiny ones for little pieces. These are a little Little bit on the smaller side for this but they're they're better than the really big ones so we're gonna go ahead and use them and I do really love these this brand Karen K Buckley scissors they're very nice to cut with um, I do have other very nice ones um, but these are lightweight they have big fingers it's squishy it's a little commercial for her no I'm not sponsored by her um, so anyway when I go to cut I'm gonna put the piece in the back end of my blade and if you notice, I don't move my scissor hand. I rotate the piece into the scissor blade. 
you will get a much cleaner, nicer cut. And if you stay at the back of your scissors, you have much more control when cutting your shape. So that's just a quickie tip on cutting with your scissors. So I am gonna go ahead, I will get all of these letters cut out, and then we'll be back to arrange all our pieces for the runner, and we'll talk about the block. So let me finish getting these cut, and we'll be right back. All right, so we are back. I've got all of the pieces cut out, and we are ready to build this on our project. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut the background whichever size it needs to be. Whether you're doing the block, or the runner, it doesn't matter. So I've already got this cut, but you can see it has wrinkles in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press it before I iron things down. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, this is a center line because that's how I cut it. I've got my pieces all cut in the back. Hang on a minute. So it's already marked center line that way. Even when I iron it, you'll still see that a little bit. And if not, you're just going to do fold this into quarters to create your center line. You're gonna be a lot neater than I just was. And then we are going to peel the paper backing off of our letters and we're gonna start with the center letter, which is U. And that will get centered right there and we'll spread out the letters and we'll position the flowers as we desire them and then we iron everything down. Now a trick to peel the paper off is to take a straight pin, score the back, and then bend it and it'll become a crack and peel. You don't wanna to try to do it from the edges because you can fray the fabric edges. So just take a straight pin, which I don't have right here, and just scratch the back. Obviously a point of a scissor would work too. There we go, we have our crack and peel and we peel everything off. That exposes the glue on the back of the fabric and we're gonna put these, position these all down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this pressed and um, I'm gonna get all the paper off and get everything pressed. And then I'll be back to talk about the threads and how I'm using them again. Um, I'm going to do the same thing here as we talked about in the beginning, but I'll go over that one more time. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get it stitched off camera again. If you wanna see how it's stitched, make sure you check out video one. I will make sure to link it below. And then we're gonna jump into how to make the borders for these. So real quick fusible applique thing, just because we've already covered it in this whole quilt, every month there is fusible applique. So I just don't wanna you know, do that over and over and over and take your time doing that. So let me get this ready and we'll be ready to stitch. All right, so we have everything pressed down, but I wanna show you what I did at the ironing board. I took a ruler, I had my center line, so I first centered this, but then I took this ruler and I aligned the straight edge of one of the lines in this. It turns out I have it three inches, the bottom of the letters are three inches from the bottom of the piece. So that way I just laid this on, I laid out my letters, you'll see the but the body of the G hits the ruler and the rest of it curls under. And then I just position the daisies making sure to not be a quarter inch away. So I have at least a half inch on all four points so that when I sew it together with the border, we don't catch a petal in the seam. Now that we've done that, let's go back again to the three threads in our package, which in this block inspired these colors. So again, we're going to use the dark orange on the words. And if you haven't seen the Aurifil large spools before, the bottom comes off and that is where you can start your thread. So if you ever wondered where to start it, these little the little flange comes off and on. And then when I sew, I like to leave the flange a little bit away from the thread so the thread has room to move around the spool. When you wanna check a thread against your fabric, just lay it on top in one strand of it and you will see if it disappears, if it shows up, if it's gonna be darker or lighter. You don't wanna hold the whole spool against it because it's too much color against color. This is a much more accurate representation. So we're gonna use that for those. Bright orange will be on our centers and then we're gonna take this pale peach and we're gonna outline the daisies just like we did with the block here. And I'm gonna show you a close up. It just gives it a nice soft finish but it adds a little more interest to the white petals. So that is how I'm gonna stitch this up. I'm gonna use a blanket stitch and I wanna make sure I use an open toe foot. That's what it looks like. Uh, it's much easier to see what you're working on 
And then there's a center line on the foot right there. I'm gonna use that center line right on the edge of the applique fabric and the straight stitch of the blanket stitch will go into your background and the bite goes into the piece. And again, we're gonna go real close here so you can see that the straight is right on the edge of the petal. It's on the, into the background. I don't know how close I can get. There you go. It's into the background and only the bite is going onto the applique. So I'm going to get this stitched up and we'll be ready to do our borders. All right. So we've got this all stitched up as you can see. And I have this one all stitched up. So now we're ready to finish both our block border and our runner border. So let's go over how we make those units. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to see there are templates in the pattern to do the diamond border that goes around the block. And you can use these paper templates. You can either glue them onto um, template plastic, that's the word I want, or you may have a Trirex ruler sitting around the house, or this one's my favorite. This is the Creative Grids Two Peaks in One. I love this ruler. If you buy any of our patterns, I tend to use this one a lot. And all you need to do is you need to lay this on the piece and see where it is. So these finish at two inches and they are cut at two and a half. And then the same thing up here, um, this is going to be for this side and then you just flip the ruler over for that side. So you can use the ruler to cut your templates to make your diamond pieces. Um, or you can just, like I said, use templates in the pack. We don't wanna make you have to buy a ruler, so this is an optional thing. So now we're gonna make these diamond units here. And so how we do that is, again, we're going to cut our orange for the center. You're going to do, I don't remember how many, <laughs> you're going to do 18 of these and 18 of these. So same amount. So you're going to cut 18 and 18. And then for the side pieces, you will cut 18 of the left and 18 of the right for both of them. So that means you need 36 of these and 36 of these, 18 and 18. So once you have everything cut, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna place your first piece onto your first template onto the side, just like that. And with the ruler, you're able to cut both a notch at the top and a notch at the bottom. The template only has one notch, it doesn't have both. Um, but there we go. So we can align it here. And if you don't have this notch, it'll just stick uh, out a little bit further and you're going to sew across. So that is what's done here and then we're going to press this out and then we're going to take a second one and put it on the other side. Again, the fat part of the triangle goes, oh, the side triangle goes towards the narrow part of the center triangle and then obviously narrow against fat. So just, you can always do that. You can always remember it that way, narrow to fat. And we're going to put that one on and we're going to sew it. Now, it doesn't matter if you start with the left side or the right side. You just need to make sure once you sew one side on, you do press it before you sew the second side onto here um, because it overlaps right at the top there. And so if you don't press this open, you're actually sewing over your folded piece. So once you've got both of these sewn on, you end up with a piece that looks like this. And you can square this up to measure two and a half inches. It should be pretty exact because uh, we cut all the pieces exact. But sometimes our, our pieces, like this one here, shifted a little bit. You could tear this off and shift it. It's easy enough to finagle this, but I, I usually just sort of stretch it a little. I'm not the perfect sewer, I'm a fast sewer. All right, so then once we have these, we're going to take two of these and we're going to align the triangle at the bottom and we're going to sew it so we end up with our diamonds. So then we end up with 18 of the fabric K, the weave, the orange weave, and 18 with D, the solid orange. So now we have these, we're ready to do our corners. So let me move these out of the way. So the corners look like this. They're a square and a square. Okay, these also are gonna measure two and a half inches and you're gonna need four of those. And how you do those is you're going to take your big square and your small square, you're gonna align the square on there and you're gonna sew from one diagonal to the other, just like we did here. You will flip it out 
and press it and you can trim this excess fabric back here leaving a quarter inch seam and you can do this corner my fingers aren't working tonight and this corner so you can do opposite corners stitch them both just like that then you can trim both sides press out your triangles formed so you end up with this and then once you end up with that, you can do the opposite triangles on here. And again, you can trim off leaving a quarter inch seam allowance and you will press these open and you will end up with four of these. So for the block, we're using 18 of each diamond. No, I'm sorry, nine of each diamond, 18 of each triangle, nine of each diamond and four of these guys. So once we've got those done, we're ready to follow the diagram in here to sew our borders together. You're gonna make um, two side borders that are exactly the same. You will make a top border and a bottom border that are opposite. So for this one there, you will follow the diagrams to sew those. I will go ahead and get these sewn and get them sewn on here so you can see the finished piece. Um, but then let's talk about the border for our runner. So for the runner, what I did is instead of doing these diamonds, diamond, these triangle units, a lot of people kind of don't like to do these. It's, it's a love hate thing. Um, so what I did is when I designed the runner, even though I changed the size of the runner, what I did is I kept the half square triangle borders two and a half inches as well. So these units finish at two and a half and when you sew two together, you get two and a half by four and a half, which is the same as this size. So these are the same size. So if you didn't want to mess with the templates or the diamonds at all, you can just make half square triangles following the count and use these as your border on the block. It'll look just as nice um, it just won't have the diamonds, it'll have triangles. So I put that in there specifically so that if you didn't want to mess with these, you didn't have to. But for our runner, we're going to need to make half square triangles. So you're going to take two fabrics that are cut two and seven eighths, put them right sides together. And then what you can do is you can draw a diagonal line down the center, which we've done here. And then you're gonna sew a quarter inch away, maybe it'll show up better there. It'll sew a quarter inch away from that center line. And then once you've done that, you will cut that in half right through the center, right through the diagonal. And you're gonna press these open and you end up with two triangles from each square set. So however many triangles you need, you only need half as many squares. And then you have these little dog ears on here, which I highly recommend cutting off because if you just leave them and sew, these can get bulky around the seam. And when you're quilting, you could hit one of them and you're even piecing, it can throw your piecing off, your quarter inch seam off because there's extra bulk there. So I usually will stack up a bunch of these and then I will just take scissors and I just snip off the little dog ears on each corner. So then once those are all gone, we're ready to sew these, just like we did with the diamonds. So two together to create the triangle. And you're going to need, one, two, three, it looks like we need, how many? How many do we need? And the directions for all of this are in here with illustrations. So for the runner, you only need 10 of each color because the runner is smaller. But again, if you want to use them for the block, you would do 18 of each color and just, again, follow the pattern around and be able to do that over here without having to, um, <laughs> without having to make the triangle blocks. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I will get all of our borders sewn on and I will show you what the finished product look like. Um, it is getting a little late tonight, so you will probably see me tomorrow with a different shirt on, but we will show you what the finished blocks look like in the morning. All right, so we have gotten our borders on our block and on our runner so these are ready to go this one is going right in let's see here that's what it looks like um, this one is going to go right into the box to go into the quilt the imagine quilt 
Um, once all the months are done, we'll be putting that guy together. Believe me, that quilt top will go together quite quickly once we finish all the blocks, so that can go away. Now this guy is ready to be quilted, and I'm not gonna quilt this on camera. Um, I'm actually famous for quilting by check, meaning I usually have a long arm quilter quilt my samples. But in this case, I'm probably gonna quilt this one myself. I was thinking of taking this daisy print print this daisy shape and actually tracing it around where these aren't and actually stitching them in this color so that it um, mimics it and it gives it a nice texture but it also when you look closer you see the daisies I will use um, this to go around my letters because I like my letters to pop out in this guy I will do something out here maybe I will do like a crisscross in the border but once I get it quilted I'll share it with you in a later video but I just wanted to sign off and show you what they look like I hope you enjoyed month three please leave me a comment below if you're stitching along with me on the imagine quilt again this quilt pattern is part of the mole queen thread collector club it's a Aurafil Thread Collector Club. Every month you get three large spools and the whole idea of the club is that at the end of the year you will have a beautiful library of Aurafil threads in all different colors. There's basics, there's a couple variegated, and I believe it is still $49.95 a month, which just the three threads alone usually are about that price. So you're getting the block of the month pattern, the two-in-one pattern every month for free. Uh, if you think of it that way, <laughs> but I hope you will join us. Um, and for that's it for month three. We will see you next month where we do a placemat. And it's a pieced block with a little bit of applique. So we're going to be, as we're getting in later into the quilt, there's definitely more variety of what we're doing. But every other month we do get an inspirational word. So, so far we have done inspire and we have done laugh. And I think the next one is my favorite, which is create. So stay tuned. Make sure you follow along. I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified. And definitely leave me a comment and let me know what you think about these block of the month. As always, I thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.